There's been some research being done on if we could get a secure lockbox mailbox that would be on the outside of the building and the mail would basically come inside and be secure rather than being the mailbox on the outside. Um, there may be some things we could do to improve the pantry pack uh, experience. We have a list of items from the SFS evaluation. We really just at this point need a few people to be a property team or a steering committee to kind of look at what those projects might be. Um, but there is so many there. We have scholarship that's given every year, $500 to, um, we give it to a graduating senior, high school senior, and then they get it in their freshman year. Um, that uh, we have money in the scholarship memorial right now, so that is funded for next year. And last, we still have a little over $6,000 in the proceeds from the sale. As you might recall from talking about the budget or the balance sheet, we had 46,000 at the end of 2019 and we spent 40,000 of that in uh, 2020. You go to the next slide, please. So this next slide is the allocation from the proceeds and um, Jim Nicholson and I did do some uh, talking about this. We're both in line with these plans. So currently in the account, there is 32,000. Conservatively, we've estimated our interest um, proceeds may be 20,000, that would be 5,000 a quarter. It has been over that um, in the payments we've received so far. So that's a conservative amount. Um, so then we looked at reinvesting some. We would reinvest some immediately, 5,000 now, and another 5,000 later in the year. We're going to tithe on the portion we don't reinvest. So you can see that's 2,162 now and another 1,200 later. Uh, the, out of the uh, endowment allocation is also $5,000 to go for moving and technology expenses for a new pastor. The IT support transition is kind of a, it's a pretty loose number. We're having some issues with the company that is currently providing IT support to Salem, and we want to make a change to a more responsive company. Uh, the ones we've talked to all have an initial setup fee. 10,000 is a very generous amount, and probably we will not spend all of that, but we have allocated for that item out of the endowment. We have 7,500 to go to property projects, and these would be the same kind of list of things I just talked about in the assumptions. And then the last thing, there was 10,000 uh, for ministry, 5,000 of it specifically for the pastor's discretionary fund. That leaves about $6,000 that is not allocated, and I think that's completely appropriate because the final um, interest payment for 2021 is likely to be on the very last day of the year and we would not be able to spend it in the year. So I think this is a, a pretty appropriate uh, allocation and a good plan. Next slide, please. So this is the 2021 budget um, that we will be presenting. Um, you see the $280,000 for interest income or for offering income. The endowment proceeds shows 15,000 instead of 20,000 because once we've invested the 5,000 this year, it would really be a net of 15. So that's how it shows up. And then other pass through is 850, kind of a placeholder for um, things that we expect to receive money in for for the year. So think about lilies this year. Um, assuming we have VBS, there's usually some payments in for that. So that was just is kind of a placeholder for that. Our fixed expenses, um, the staff uh, amount, the staff expense is um, includes a 3% raise for staff. It also includes a total of $10,000 for the relocation fees and technology needs for a new pa pastor. 5,000 of that would be coming from the endow endowment fund or endowment interest. And the $10,000 for the IT setup fees is included in the administrative expense line, which is why that number looks pretty high. The building fund project listed here, 22,300 is 100% covered by the allocation from the endowment, as well as what is cash on hand for that. 
And lastly, the lease and rent um, expense on here uh, covers two things. One, what we pay for the use of the Bob Marshall Chapel. And secondly, our storage unit um, from when we moved out of the buildings. Are there any questions on this budget? Okay, next slide please. This next slide is the budget detail. So this is again where the grayed out ministries are the ones that are self-funded. That would be uh, your memorials, Thrivent Choice, uh, the men's and uh, men's ministry, Salem ministry, pantry pack, and the Meredith fund. So that's that's the budget plan. Are there any questions on the budget? Okay, last on the agenda is to talk a little bit about the annual meeting and how this is, uh, what our plans are for that. The annual meeting will be same time, same channel next week. Um, we do have the opportunity for up to 50 people, for up to 50 people to join us in person at the chapel. Um, if you would like to join in person, we ask that you sign up Genius and get on the list. Um, if you need someone to sign up for you, uh, contact myself or the office and we'll get you on the list. Um, the rules will be the same as always. Um, need to socially distance while you're in the chapel. Need to wear a mask at all times. Uh, the proceedings for the meeting will be uh, streamed on Facebook Live as well as uh, YouTube, just like we're doing today. The people who join on Facebook and YouTube would not be, we would not be able to count for quorum. So I, just to quickly remind everyone, quorum is 20% of voting members in the meeting. We're gonna look at quorum being the people in the room as well as uh, voting members identified on Zoom. So again, I would say if you are joining on Zoom, it's important that your Profile shows your first and last name, so we're able to tell who is on Zoom and we can count you as part of quorum. What we're going to do on quorum is the meeting will open with a devotional. After the devotional, we'll call for quorum. There's going to be a couple of council members who are here or on Zoom who are counting who is here and on Zoom and we'll verify that we have uh, enough for quorum. Without quorum, we would not be able to continue the meeting. So it is really important that we do have quorum. 20% uh, of voting members were right around 30 people. I feel good like we can have that number, but I do need people to be conscientious that if you are participating in the meeting, please sign in on Zoom. Please have your first and last name so we can verify that you are there. And uh, so that's just all very important. Uh, lastly, all the items that need to be voted on at the annual meeting, including things like approving the minutes of last year's meeting, will be on a written ballot. People who are here in the chapel will have the option to submit their ballot at the conclusion of the meeting. If you are uh, participating via Zoom or watching the proceeds later on YouTube or Facebook, you, uh, the ballot will be available on Salem's website starting on Thursday. Your ballot needs to be back to the church office by 5 p.m. on February 8th. Uh, we will have ballots available at the office, at the church office, if you would like to go do it that way rather than try to mail it in or drop it off. Uh, just keep in mind the office hours are 8 to 1, Monday through Thursday. Uh, what we'll do then is council's first business on February 8th will be to count the ballots. And so we'll announce the results of everything the following day. Um, I do want to say I hope that the financial information looked encouraging here uh, because we still have two openings for council. At least one of those needs to be a woman. So uh, if you are interested or have had any thoughts about serving the church in this way, we'd, I'd love to hear from you. So you can contact uh, Tanya or myself on that. And then the last thing I'll say about the annual meeting is the annual report is posted out on Salem's Facebook or sorry, Salem's website. Um, please go review the information prior to the meeting so that you, if you have questions, 
feel free to submit them in advance or be prepared with them. Obviously, there's some technical difficulties in trying to make sure that people on Zoom have the opportunity for input as well as the people in the room. So we're going to do our best that everyone is heard and that questions can be answered, but I would encourage you to review the information as best you can before the meeting. And that is all I have for today. Are there any questions? Thank you for all you've done on this and for the council. You guys have been amazing and getting all this going and organized. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Lynn? Yes. Will paper copies of the annual report be available in the uh, in Koinonia Hall prior to the meeting? Yes, I should have mentioned that. I'm sorry. There will be paper copies of the annual report available for people who attend in person. If you are not attending in person, but you would like to pick one up from the church office, um, I'm, going to I'm going to have Sherry print them on Tuesday. Um, so hopefully Wednesday, you would be able to pick one up. Wednesday or Thursday. If there's nothing else, I will just say, uh, Go Chiefs. Thank you, Lynn. I think you did a great job. I'm like Kathy. Thank you for all your hard work. And go Chiefs. <laughs> Thank you very much. Everyone have a wonderful day.